I was bored to tears on Sunday. I was just awful. Are you kidding me? Bored to tears. Mm -hmm. It was absolute and utter chaos during the fourth quarter of the 1 p.m. games. Like everything went to shit within 15 minutes. I tried to, I really tried to watch the Monday night game. I honestly did. And there was just, and I, and I like Jason Kelsey. I can't stand Travis Kelsey. I like Jason Jason's Kelsey. Jason's not good on air. So, it was so much Kelsey's. They just kept forcing it and forcing it. I think that's when I texted you guys, like, like how much more of these jabronis do we have to listen to? I mean, it's enough already with these guys. Like they cut the commercial and it's the Kelsey's are on the commercial. And then they come back and Eli Manning teased like, oh, we got a special guest. I'm like, okay, here we go. And it was Jason Kelsey, the same guy that they had just been talking to on set on the other ESPN channel. But it's enough already. Uh, and I, like I, I speak very fast. I understand that. Yeah. He speaks really, really. It's, it's almost very hard to listen to. It's enough. I tried to watch the Monday night game. Uh, the Jets looked awful. Awful. And the book did not really do that well in that game. So it's okay. Oh, I can see that. I, I didn't the watch the Sunday contest. night game. So that was uh, that was not good. No. I didn't watch Sunday night. I saw the final score. I watched. You know what game I watched a lot of? Tampa Bay. Oh, that was my because best bet. That was, that was your best bet. That was Sam Paniotovich's best bet. Oh, what was I your best it. bet, John Murray? I, I forget. The Raiders. Well, I mean, I didn't know they well, were going to kick a, I didn't know they were going to punt on Surrender and punt. Antonio Pierce. I mean, these guys fought I, for you and you surrender punted with what, five minutes left in the game? You're, what you're the only one that can criticize somebody that went 15 and three last year because he lost because the team's coach punted on fourth and one. I just had to throw in some shade. You didn't like yeah, my shade when I said that that you, when you said about Notre Dame having an easy schedule and going to the college football playoff, and I wrote, that's why he works for a sports book, because that's what everybody says to me when I lose. See why she has to work for a sports book? Well, they, but the whole, the whole premise of the bet was they have an easy schedule. They're not supposed to lose when they're a minus 6,000 favorite. No shit. The, 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 pre, the premise of the bet was correct. They were an enormous favorite, and they lost yep. the game. I yep. Mean, what, can, what are you going to do? They're going to lose that game twice. So, I don't know. Let's see. That was a tough loss. Um, no comment? You have Raiders no comment game. on that. About what? That they're going to lose again this weekend. Well, I mean, they might if the quarterback's actually hurt. But, I mean, that that but that also is part of the bet. That's any bet. If you make a season-long bet, the starting quarterback gets hurt, you're basically screwed. I mean, I don't know what you can do about In that. In college, you shouldn't be as screwed. Like, this isn't – No, like, I, I agree with that. I feel like with NIL and with all of these – like. You're probably right. I mean, I, I if Avery Johnson got hurt, K State might be screwed, maybe. But you know, Jacob Kuth is okay. Yeah. Transferred from Minnesota. I don't know enough about him, but I'd like to think that he could still run the offense. But Riley Leonard is not good oh. anyway. We had we had a, a serious setback the first week of our Cleveland Indians bet. Their their ace pitcher had Tommy yeah, I, John like a week into the season. And we, we were able to overcome that. So, I mean, these things is happen. That, is, this over, is baseball season over yet? No. There's like three more weeks and then the playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to cash that ticket for like three more weeks. Baseball is great, man. Uh, uh, no, yeah, the Raiders, Ra- Raiders did let us down. They, I mean, everyone's talking about the punt, but they also had fourth and one at like the 10-yard line. They kicked a field goal. Uh, so, I don't know what Antonio Pierce thinks he's doing exactly, but – he really let his team down with those those kicking decisions. They also missed a field goal earlier in the game, but really it came down to some bad decisions. That doesn't mean that they would have won or covered if they had gone for it. I'm not saying that. But there's no way you can kick that field goal or punt. That's you gotta consider how low scoring that game was. You might not get back down to the ten yard line. And you're kicking a field goal down nine. There's no guarantee you're ever going to be down there again. Very, and then obviously he punted later in the game, basically surrendered the game, which, by the way, is what, because I wasn't watching that game. I was watching the Redskins Buccaneers game. The Redskins were down by 16. 
they had a fourth and seven at midfield and they punted it away. It's like, so you're, you're basically saying, okay, we quit. Yeah. Because if you're down by 16, it's still technically two possessions. Don't you yes. owe it to your team to at least try to, to, it was fourth and seven at midfield. They sent out the punt unit game over. Great. I, I don't understand it. I mean, and then on the flip side, then you have the Steelers who kicked six field goals, three over 50 yeah. yards, and then they won the game. So it's like our Man. argument sometimes gets voided or lost in the translation. But, yes, punting is worse than kicking field goals. That type of kicking is the worst by far. I watched I watched the Steelers game. I had, uh, I had Steelers in uh, – in the millions contest. And I, my two takeaways, TJ Watt is the best defensive player in the league. Yes. That guy is he's the most disruptive player, I think on defense. And I thought it was funny and it made us laugh in the back. How every time the Steelers were like, even a close to field goal range, it was almost like they were playing to not, not be able to kick the field goal. You know, it's like, all right, let's just, let's just run it a couple of times and send it to the field goal unit. They didn't even attempt to try to score a touchdown. That's I mean, funny to me. if me you laugh. have Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, are you really that? I mean, if you're more secure in Boswell than you are in your two your two quarterbacks, that should probably tell you something. It was funny, Kelly. But you know, you were a big topic of conversation in the back room this weekend because you were you were on fire, dude. Like your your rum ham play is that what it's like the rum ham play of the week. Chuckle the chuckle rum. play, the chuckle play. Can I get the double the genre dog? Isn't it a rum? It's rum. Can I get? I want my guy John Hoagland to do a rum ham graphic. What the hell is rum ham? What are you talking exactly. about? Always sunny in Philadelphia. The rum ham. Oh God. So okay. I get well, your rum ham play was Cal. I used Cal. Rum I used Cal plus thirteen and a half in a contest in town. I didn't know they were going to win the game outright. I don't know they're going to win the game outright. And That's every Auburn fan told me how stupid I was, and this was a new Auburn offense, and I'm going, wow. <laughs> because they played that some was... FCS school week one. You want me to believe that? That was pretty good. And then you also had you had Michigan State outright as well. At Maryland. How did you come up with that? But why? The only thing I got right on Saturday, I'm going to pat myself on the back because I was like one for 50, was I knew enough to sidestep that Michigan landmine. I saw that coming. You were smart. Yeah, and I, and I, I blame Louie because I should have had – I should have absolutely had South Carolina instead. Look, we can we, – look, we can go back to week two right here. It's very easy to do. You just go one page back and yeah. you say – oh, sorry, two pages back. Uh, what the hell is it? <laughs> so it's not that easy, folks. It's it clearly should be. Very did somebody difficult. rip out my week two page? Probably the dog. There's only, so it's not easy at all. The Look, dog is a terrorist. This is a tough segment. This is not good. But so seriously, what, what, I don't what know where that page is. Back to, uh, my point was that I, I text on Tuesday. I said, tell me about South Carolina. I think they can beat Kentucky. And uh, that was it. I got, I got crickets and just told I was an idiot. Two people called you an idiot? You and Louie were like, look what they I just did to us. I, didn't I know. I, I actually just I did my video for the Westgate, and I just said, you know, or maybe I could have just grown a pair and bet them anyway. I should not have been on Michigan. They looked awful. Not a great, not a really a good Saturday. The only, the only game on paper that was really outstanding was Michigan-Texas. That ended up being a blowout. The primetime game Saturday night was also a bit of a dud. Nebraska, Colorado. Yeah, I think I think this is like the worst college football Saturday I can ever remember. I mean, it's this is really like, bad. I mean, when K State Arizona on Friday night is like the marquee yeah, game. That's, and a, that's a good South, game. South Carolina LSU is game day. Like that should tell you. I was laughing because I open up X the other night. I get home. I went and played bingo with Brett's mom and Aunt Joyce. I won sixty five dollars. Big, big spender over there. I got double cards, so I kind of stacked the deck. But, boy, was that – it was kind of chaotic. So then I get home. It's like 9.30. I open up X, and it's like the debate. And I'm sitting there, and I'm working on college football. I'm doing something like – everybody just bitching about both of these candidates, and I'm cracking up because I'm like, man, this college football card really sucks. This is what, this is what really bothers me right now. It, it 
like so we do this thing where at the Westgate Superbook here in Nevada, we will designate games that we call marquee games, and we have higher limits for the marquee games. Like an example would be Sunday, Bengals Chiefs will be a marquee yeah. game. The Sunday night game with Chicago Houston marquee game. So I, I came into work on Tuesday. I'm talking to Jeff Sherman. You know Jeff. He's I like, what game? What game do you think should be the college game? And I looked at it, and he's like, we're gonna go with Colorado, Colorado State. And I was like, are you kidding me? That's the best game we have. That that's uh, horrible, Jeff. That is unfortunately for fortunately for me, Jay Cornegay was there in the room. He's a Colorado State grad. He didn't appreciate what I was saying. But that yeah, but his team's gonna win outright, so he's gonna be fine. This is a this is a week college football Saturday. I can run you through some sharp stuff I see and that but you want to go first? What's your so what's your rum ham play? Why don't you do in order your best bet, the hottie threesome or foursome, depending on how frisky you are, and the rum ham. Go ahead. My best bet for college football Saturday is South Carolina plus seven. Oh, I like the book is gonna need kidding aside, the book is gonna need that side big. I okay, think well, good. just looking at the board right now. I think that'll be our biggest need of the week, South Carolina. Wow. South, Car- South Carolina plus seven. Biggest need of the yes. week, huh? I believe that it will be. I mean, it's a little bit early, and and you are going to see parlays going to the night games always, right? But, yeah, I think South Carolina is going to be – Interesting. This is the big one. All right. Okay. Uh, the, uh, that is my one. best bet. Love Shane Beamer, underdog. And how did I know Michigan State was going to win outright? Because I know? said in the video, Jonathan Smith, that's why I'm not on Oregon State this week, because I actually don't – I don't think it carries over with new coaches. K-State carried over. Chris Kleiman's a great underdog coach. So is Bill Snyder. I can't promise it's going to always carry over with the new team. But Jonathan Smith got it done for us. Uh, and it Because they looked – I bet against him the week prior. Little, little by low spot, if you will. So it's not Oregon uh, State, but what is the, what's the wrong man? Uh, the chuckle, double-digit underdog play, chuckle right there, uh, is Purdue plus 10. Purdue plus 10, okay. Uh, yeah. Look, I think sometimes when teams just get their heart and souls ripped out, right? So here's Notre Dame. They go out, plus three, winning college station. Yeah. Not not a great win, but they win, right? Well, I don't yeah, think a and that good of a team. I would disagree a little bit with that. Given their schedule, that was on paper, again, we talk about schedules, that was their hardest game of the year by far. For them, That I would say that was a great win to win in college right. station. And they they squandered the whole thing the next week, losing to Northern Illinois. They had a, they had a coaching decision, too. They had a second and one when they should have been salting the game away, and they throw the ball <laughs> Down the middle of the field in a like triple coverage. Yikes. These teams, man. These teams. But go ahead. Yikes. Tell me the uh, uh, look. Here's the here's the real kicker. When you lose that opportunity to go to the college football playoff, which is essentially what they did, right? They essentially have eliminated themselves by losing as 28 and a half point favorites. Sure, there's gonna be no. other upsets, but but they are that loss is going to hurt them significantly to the point that they might not oh, get yeah. it. Okay. So well, after, to your point, after last week, if you looked at the ad- adjusted odds to make the playoffs, the only two teams that were favored by more to make it were Georgia and Ohio state, two teams that are essentially locks to make the playoffs. They, because of their schedule, they were as they were just on the next level of teams basically a cinch to get to the college football playoff and they lose as <laughs> a 28 and a half point fan. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But go, it's just unbelievable. So, that's college football though. That's college well, football. That stuff happens. It does happen. And that's why I love this shit so much better than NFL. But yeah, me too. I- I'm banking that that soul crush just takes the wind out of their sails. I- the reason why I didn't bet, Purdue in the parlay and I used him as my double digit underdog. I do think they can win this game at home. I do believe that this team is getting a little bit of disrespect, but I think ultimately it's Notre Dame's going to lose that game twice. If they lose it outright. 
Purdue, nine oh. ranked teams in the last three years. They've won four outright underdogs, and I've been on two of them. I just feel like the problem with the play is, and I can't, I can't really criticize you because you were so good last week with this Rumham play, but the, don't you think the number has already been adjusted sure. to Notre Dame's disastrous week two? I mean, wasn't sure. the look ahead line was like 16, I think. Okay. And the, and the look ahead line for, for KU this week was 11, and now it's seven, right? And then it got back up to, what, nine and a half? I think that's kind of the reality, but yet the Purdue line is now nine and a half from 12 and a half. So it's kind of that opposite effect. Yeah, no, I, know. Where I think KU might actually bounce back from that Illinois loss, even though there's a little bit of trouble in paradise there, AKA Lawrence, Kansas, whereas Notre Dame just completely got derailed. I think those are different scenarios and the market is adjusting accordingly. Sure. Could I, could we say that's an overreaction to, to rush to back Purdue here? I think Purdue's like, holy shit, we can actually win this game where maybe before they were like, oh, great, Notre Dame's coming to town. We're going to get steamrolled. Because they are 0-8 against the spread versus the Irish in the last eight games. That's why I didn't put them in my parlay because I was like, I'm not sure they can actually win this game. You're admitting that Lawrence, Kansas is a paradise. I, I yes, hear that. That's, that's what I said. Well, oh, I, I like Lawrence. paradise. I've had, a good, I've had a good time in Lawrence. Okay, and then why don't you do your hottie threesome – Chase Michelson, he's one of our employees. He just put this up for betting. What is it? 42 to 1. South Carolina, Colorado State, Wyoming. Now, Wyoming's would you, would, really stinky. Would you consider that a boost? Because the, the true odds were like plus 41, 46, and then we no. boosted it. Well, he said, he said, do you want 41 to 1 or do you want – 42 to one. I said, what are the true odds? And I rounded up because of course I love my, my people and I want the Westgate to lose money. What? I just, I feel like that's a boost. I don't, I mean, to me, that's, that's definitely. Can't wait wait to lose them all. Thanks, John Murray Jinx. So here's some sharp plays for college football. Kelly mentioned, I think you, you already mentioned Kansas, right? That line's gone up to nine. They're at home Friday night against UNLV. Player I, I respect took seven and a half with Arizona. They are taking on who this week? Kansas State. State. Oregon minus 14. They're at, sorry, Oregon State. That sucks, by the way, that the Silver, Civil War is on September 14th in Corvallis. Oregon minus you can't, 14. You can't call it that anymore. You can't call it that? What are you talking about? No. Gosh. Just like the uh, Red River shootout. You can't call it that anymore. What the hell? I don't make these rules. I don't care. I got yelled at some guy in our comment called me MAGA something the other day because I said Redskins. You said Redskins on this show? I said I don't see the difference between Redskins, Chiefs, Braves. Does it really matter? Apparently it does. He did not like that. I, I hope that the producers beep it out when we say Redskins. That's, yeah. You can't say that. Yeah, Arkansas course. minus 21 is another one. And then this one... Really sharp group came in, took Toledo plus 11 and a half again. That looks Toledo. Yeah, so that that one looks pretty good. That that group's pretty solid, plus 11 and a half. We're down to 10 in that game. Do you want to turn our, our turn the page? Bad college card. Why don't we it's turn really the page ugly. to your league, the National Football League? We've got Miami and Buffalo tonight. It's really very lopsided to Miami here. For us, we're we're going to be rooting for the Bills tonight. You know, I use the Bills. In one yeah, of but you guys are rooting for the dog every night in prime time, and the chalk just keeps winning. No, we we actually not entirely true. We wanted we wanted Kansas City against Baltimore last uh-huh. Thursday because okay. we we set it up that way. But normally, of I, course, I was told the books don't do that. Well, if we, if we have sharp information, we'll use it to set up a decision. Yeah, we'll of course. That. Uh, I but, love when, like, I say that, like, all the time. It's like they're baiting in more money on one side, and people are like, they don't do that. Yes, they do. Well, we're not, we, to be clear, we're not, like, gambling on some wa- wacky opinion. We had we had respected play on of Kansas course. City, so we took some money on Baltimore, did well on that game. That was a crazy game, by the way. That yeah, was like, a crazy game. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, so we're going to need Buffalo tonight. I had Buffalo in one of the... 
survivor, the survivor contest in town on one of my entries, that was dicey. Yeah. That that, was, they got that's done. what I said. The, the fourth quarter could have been way more catastrophic. I mean, I was happy that the Bengals lost, but if the Bills would have lost too, ooh. Yeah, no, that's fair. And that they almost did. I mean, really, Josh Allen more or less won that game by himself against Arizona. Yeah, Clay and I kind of got into it about Josh Allen because I'm just not like – I'm not a Josh Allen hater, but when I need him to win games like versus Kansas City and Philadelphia and playoff games, like he's just not that clutch. Well, I, that's a little bit unfair. I mean, he, he, he had one of the most clutch drives I've ever seen in that divisional playoff game put the bills ahead in like with like 13 seconds left. All his coaching staff had to do was just do a squib kick and they would have won the game and they would have made it to the AFC championship game. Probably they kick it off deep. His defense gives up a field goal. They lose in overtime. He never got the ball. And then last exactly. year, Diggs drops one of the best passes I've ever seen. And then the, the kicker misses the field goal which I would have just tied it in fairness. It wouldn't have won the game, but he, he hasn't always gotten a ton of help. That's he's fair. Also had, he's had some stinkers at games too, but like you to win at the highest level, you've got Do to Do you think some he's help. the second best quarterback? That's what Clay asked me, and I, I said I don't I, know. I would, I'd have to say yes, he is, because I, I love Joe Burrow, but it looks no, like it's there's not something Joey wrong B. with Burrow. I agree. It, it's, I, yeah, something's honestly, wrong with him. Know. His focus is completely... In La La Land. What is he doing? I don't know how you could make a case right now that it's anybody other than Allen. I well, and that's what Clay said. I was, I was trying I to actually make a case, but you're right. I just have a little disdain for him for and his team for well, you know what? those losses. And this, is, this is something that uh, – this is how it was with the NBA when we were kids. Because Michael Jordan existed, yeah. there were a lot of great players that never got to win a championship. And that might be what we're seeing right now with Patrick Mahomes. He might be so good and the Chiefs might be so good that there might be some great athletes and great teams that don't ever get to win because he exists. And it doesn't make them any less great. They just sometimes you run into the wrong era. I think I think Allen is definitely the second best QB in the league right now. Turns Fair the ball enough. over too turns the ball over too much, but he's, yeah. he's right well he's kind of similar to Brett Favre in that aspect. Uh, he might you know, sling it down. He might sling it downfield and get you a, a win, but he also might throw a pick six. Not as exciting as Jameis, though. No, sir. Let me let me give you some sharp NFL plays, and then you give me your NFL best bet. Okay. So this one's already moved so much; it might not even be worthwhile. But Tampa Bay and Detroit have a rematch of their divisional playoff game, which was a great game a year ago. We've seen the total go from 48 and a half all the way to 51 and a half. So you know, Tampa Bay defense looked pretty vulnerable. I watched a lot of that game against the football team, but their offense was awesome. Mike Evans was great. Baker Mayfield was on point. They steamed this total up to 51 and a half. This one makes sense to me. Minnesota plus six. You know, yeah. you get the 49ers off of a short week. The 49ers, a lot, so many people were picking against them on Monday night. And they really went out there, and they, I think they reminded everybody who they are. They're the best team in the NFC. They played great in that game. Here's one. Sharp group played Cardinals pick them, and they played Cardinals minus one, a different group. We went to one and a half. The Rams were really banged up. And the Rams, they threw the kitchen sink at Detroit on Sunday night football. They came up short in overtime. So they played Cardinals pick, Cardinals minus one. We're at one and a half. Denver plus three. Me. They're at home against the Steelers. And then these two came in this morning. Jets minus three and a half. They're at Kelly's guy, Levy's, the Tennessee quarterback. That guy's awful. And Sunday night football, John Hoagland is not going to like this. But we saw some sharp money on Houston minus six. Look, Caleb Williams, let, let's talk about it. So Caleb Williams, he did what he had to do. He got the win. He played winning football. Caleb he Williams didn't do anything. His defense did everything. That's not what I saw. I saw oh. I saw him He's inspiring the defense from the sideline, rallying them to that pick six to win the game. Caleb Williams is 1-0 is one oh as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Tennessee plus four, four and a half. 
Money line? Tennessee money line? <laughs> Fuck me. That was, that was a bad loss. That was a really bad loss. Houston minus six is getting some sharp play. So let's let's segue that a little bit. We have five we had five entries in the Splash Sports Survivor contest. We Correct. lost one on the Bengals. We have we four did. left. So I think so I think the most popular plays this week, I know the most popular plays this week are gonna be the Chargers because they're actually You really think that they're not gonna take the Ravens as the most popular play. You think they're gonna well, I was gonna say and, and the Ravens. So Okay. But there's more there's more reason to save Baltimore than there is to save San Diego or the Chargers. Why would you save the Chargers for what? So sure. you use them now when they're and and right now everyone is shitting on Bryce Young. He looked horrible on Sunday. Says somebody that had Carolina plus four on his contest card Same. didn't win that one. He looked awful in that game. So I I, I think Chargers will be the number one play. I think they'll edge out. The Ravens. I think the Ravens will be right there. But the, the Ravens have, later in the year, they've got a home game against the Redskins. They've got a home game, I think, against Denver. There's a few spots to save the Ravens for, potentially. I don't know what you're saving the Chargers for. And That's the Ravens fair. play on Christmas Day, too, by I mean, the way. The, now, they're, the, they're playing... They're, there's two other spots to play the Chargers. At home okay. versus the Saints... Or the Titans, in my opinion. That's what I have on our spreadsheet. I don't know if you Man, I don't, I don't know that I don't know that Saints at home is really a good survivor spot. I mean the, the Saints look like they might be at least New Orleans looks like they're gonna be a confident. Uh, look, I'm just saying if I'm gonna take the Chargers, it's damn sure not gonna be on the road. We've seen them okay. lose games saying, on the road but, so many times that I, I just don't trust them. I don't care if they have a new head coach or not. But you're kind of you're kind of supporting my point, though. I don't want to use the Chargers because I think they're going to be the most picked team. So if you're saying you don't want to use them, good. I don't want to use the number one picked team. I believe it's going to be Chargers. Could it be the Ravens? Of course. They're going to be the biggest favorite. But I, I just feel like more people are going to want to save Baltimore than save the Chargers. So I mentioned to Kelly this morning, I thought maybe Houston could be a good survivor play for yes. us because I'm actually afraid. And I think I sent this to you. I saw a tweet. I'm actually afraid that because all of the people that just, just survive, you know, that's like, just gets us a week two, right? Everybody that played the Bengals, mm -hmm. it wasn't the long play. It was like, good God, just get me out of week one. Yeah. None of those people exist anymore. And that's what concerns me is like, they're all going to try to zag and yeah. they're going to try to play the Texans or they're, and then that's, what's going to be the most popular play. And then I'm going to be like panicked. I hate that. How many, okay. okay that's that's a, on. How many, I asked Sammy Paniotovich okay. this morning on back QL. What do we think? 10 weeks, 11 weeks. The most popular pick went down. There was a lot last year. If you had the number one pick, you were like shitting yourself. You make a pretty good point. I, what you're saying in a nutshell is the people that are just trying to make it a week already all went out with the Bengals, and the people that are left are people that didn't use the Bengals and have more of an attack mentality. That's what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I like that point. So maybe we take – so are you saying you do want to use the Chargers? No, I'm saying I think I might want to use the Ravens because sure. they're not going to use them. But I understand also why we might want to save them. The difference is, though, this isn't the Circa Survivor. This is Splash Sports. Right. The last four or five weeks, I got to double check, we have double pick weeks. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah. like we have to save them, though, for Christmas or Thanksgiving. The Ravens do play on Christmas, but they play at Houston. Correct. Probably not a Survivor spot. For either one, I like. In my I, like I don't have any. I would have no problem using Baltimore. I'm just telling you that right now. We can talk offline, but okay. I would so have maybe no like one Baltimore, Baltimore two Texans, or two Baltimore two Texans. Because I one Lions. I, I think the Chargers are. I think Chargers be the most used team, and Baltimore. They've got three extra days to prepare for this game. They played on Thursday night. You know, it's a, it's a silly reasoning, but they, they lose this game. They go zero and two. They're in a lot of trouble. Gardner Minshew, I don't know if he can actually see over the line of scrimmage. So he, he's going to be in trouble against that Ravens defense. I don't have a problem using Baltimore. You got the west to east travel for the Raiders. And I watched the Raiders coach make 
some of the worst kicking decisions. Yeah, we know Harbaugh is going to outcoach him at the very, 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 very least. We know we're getting the better coach. I got no problem using Baltimore or Houston. I don't. I don't trust Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a six and a half point favorite That's fine. against Atlanta on Monday night. And I Your don't. Cousins in prime time, though, like, I almost feel like that makes it easy. Uh, if I'm going to bet against Kirk, I want it to be in prime time. Philadelphia, to Kelly's point, Philadelphia does have an extra day to prepare for, the, or two extra days to prepare. They play on Friday. And don't forget this Kirk Cousins is like he couldn't move. On Sunday, I guess. What about Detroit? Since we don't need to save them for Thanksgiving, and even if we did, I don't know if I'd want to use them because of what they did to us last year on Thanksgiving. My concern with Detroit is I feel like there's a chance Detroit is the best team in the NFC. Okay. I don't really want to use them right now against a Buccaneers team that I think is really good. I think think they're good, too. I think the Buccaneers are going to prove that they're actually a really good team, and I don't really want to burn Detroit. Okay. I, I know what you're saying, though. We don't have to worry about saving them for Thanksgiving when you're talking about splash sports, but man, the Niners, the, the Lions look good, man. And we had a guy, we had a guy yesterday came in, he bet, I think 33,000 on the 49ers to win the NFC at plus 215 was the ticket. And I feel like that's okay because I think there's, I think there's a, some other really good teams in the NFC this year headlined by Detroit. Detroit's so, pretty good. I know we got lucky to win on Sunday, but they got a lot of players, man. Over 3,000 got knocked out of the Splash Sports Million Dollar Guaranteed. So that's huge. And then there are, let me see, how many double pick weeks? View all games. There is, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm trying to figure out which weeks. I think it, I think it is the last four or five weeks. I think week actually it might even be six. I think it might be weeks twelve through eighteen is a double pick week, which is insane. How the hell could any? How could anyone possibly survive that? Well, we're gonna. So find no out. one is. So nobody's gonna make it to the end of that. It's just who can be around the longest, basically. Well, the difference is there. You actually have to use more teams, like in the circle when you yeah. have to use twenty. That's... Here, so I think you have to more. use. Yeah. Do you have to use all 32 teams? Maybe I should read better. This is not my contest. I did not set it up, but there was a huge overlay. Why don't you tell me your NFL best bet? You want to give me that? It's it's the Broncos plus three. You already gave it out. It's down to two and a half. If you like to tease, go for it. I hate this Broncos team. They're right there. Uh, last week, they made me very nervous with Seattle on the survivor side of things, but we survived. Denver Broncos defense looked really good. Bo Nix, not so much. I know everybody's expecting the Steelers defense to win them this game. I'm not sure the Steelers can score. And if the Steelers can't score, how are you going to win a game in mile high? So I was happy to hear that at least a sharp group agreed with me there because mm-hmm. I took four and a half with the Titans once again. And then you tell me that they came back and took three and a half with the Jets or late three and a half with the Jets, excuse me. So that's not great because I was banking on that Titans defense, saving my ass, not betting on Will Levis. I like Denver. I like Denver on Sunday. I'm with, you know, I bet Denver over five and a half wins. I'm not yes. sounding the panic alarm because they lost at Seattle and I'm not no. ready to, I'm not ready to panic about Bo Nix. You want to talk about a tough, first start he goes on the road against seattle his first game in the nfl so i'm not i'm not ready to abandon the ship with denver yet i still think denver will be a decent team i like the pick do you want to do the mailbag we can do the mailbag let me open it up get it here barnes underscore law and x says given overseas markets driving the odds how do u.s sports books handle lopsided action on european soccer also if legalized would the Superbook offer political bets? Second question, no. I don't want to. I, I decided I don't want to deal with that. With, the with political, political betting? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I could deal with, like, being interviewed about it. I just. No, it's, it's not even an interview, but, like, you, you don't think it'd be great for handle? You've said for years it'd be great for handle. It would be great for handle, but it. Don't have to be interviewed by Chase. it. Make Chase Michael do it. We can make Chase it. do it. Yeah, you're yeah. right. I'm wrong. We, we can just have Chase book it yeah. and then talk about it. You're right. Perfect. I'm sorry. Soccer question. We don't 
what we really get in soccer, the reason why we hold so well on soccer, is people just parlaying together all the favorites. The only time we really see significant soccer action is in the major tournaments, the World Cup, Champions League, of course, the Euro, the Euro which we had this summer. We don't really... All we're really doing is trying to stay in line with the offshore European markets and let people bet those parlays into those. We don't, there's really no, like the, like the kind of bets I'm reading off, like I mentioned Toledo, I mentioned Denver, I mentioned the Vikings, sharp players with original bets on football games, we don't really see that in soccer. We just see these, sca- these scavengers who see the, the market moving in Europe or offshore, and then they just copy the bet. So it's it's very different. Great question, though. A great question and an opportunity for me to mention Liverpool Football Club returns to action on All Saturday. Right, guys, I wager, has the Sanders point. show played out in Colorado? Will this be his last year when his sons and Travis Hunter head to the NFL? I bet so. So, A, I think it's his last year. Yeah. I, I, but because I, I heard he's, like, not even recruiting – Right, he doesn't give a shit. Right, he doesn't. He's not even recruiting. Well, I, I've heard he hasn't made any relationships with like the pipeline high schools in that area. Like he knows he's out. I think, but I don't think the Sanders show has played out. I mean, we had I mentioned we had Colorado was our marquee game last Saturday against Nebraska. Colorado is our marquee game this Saturday against Colorado State. I Drives mean, the handle. The Colorado Buffaloes they were an afterthought for sports betting. And the last two years, at least in September, they've been like the biggest game in town in college football. So, uh, no, I don't think it's over. People are still paying attention to it. People still are talking about it. I don't think it's over yet. All right. Did you book my booth for the 10th of November to watch? Did I do that? No. I, I texted no, you and I, asked I you to oh, get, book me a booth at the Westgate Superbook. I will get you a booth. Okay. Perfect. Yes. It's because right now they're running a special. They have $30 six-pack beer buckets, Bud, Bud Light, Mick Ultra, and Neutral. I like Neutrals. Those are pretty good. Available in the book and, of course, Football Central, both great places to watch college football and NFL. Well, Football Central is only on Sundays. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, Football Central is only on Sundays. But you get the idea. College football and NFL. All right. Vince and PGH wants to know anything to report on UFC 306 or the Canelo fight, and is John Murray attending either? Well, so nothing on the Canelo fight. I feel like Canelo has let the back half of his career be kind of boring. Like, he just he just fights twice a year against some guy that has, this is rich. generally speaking, has no chance of beating him. Yeah, he's, he's like too Floyd rich. Mayweather. He's too rich. Yeah. So, no, there's nothing on the Canelo fight. UFC 306, there are a couple of really big line moves that Andrew Babakitis wrote down for me here. So, Sean O'Malley. In the main event, he has gone from plus 140 all the way up to minus 145. We just can't stop riding money on Sugar Sean O'Malley. Interesting fight. Is he your Pretty biggest liability? And then, yes. And then the co-main event, Alexa Grasso has been bet up from minus 115 to minus 150 against Shevchenko. Both those fights are really good. Don't forget, too, the third fight on the pay-per-view Brian Ortega, T-City, he's fighting Diego Lopez. Our sharpest UFC better had a bet on T-City the first time they were going to fight at UFC 303. If you remember that, that, I was at that event. They they announced to the crowd while we were sitting there. Oh, the that's right. That Ortega was not fighting and that Dan Ige was stepping in. And it was a very interesting call event because Ige actually won the third round. Lopez did win the fight. They are doing the fight that was originally scheduled for, for I think that was the end of June. They're doing that on Saturday. Will I go? That was the original question. I'm definitely not going to go to the Canelo fight. Is this I'm, the one that's at the sphere, the, the people that are really mad at us yeah. for posting the sphere picture? Yeah, I heard about that. Oops. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, I don't know. It depends. It's expensive, man. You know, of course uh, it is. We'll it's going to be an awesome experience. Congrats to whoever yes. can afford to go. Uh, at TS Finky on X says, do you have to be rich like Kelly to rent a table at the Superbook? No, you just text John Murray. That's what I did. And you say, hi, I would like a table. Define rich. Okay, but like, seriously, how much are those tables? Because I have never had to pay for it, one. It, de- it depends. It depends. on. No, it really does. It depends on like 
the magnitude of the weekend, the magnitude. Like of the Super Bowl, I know they're always outrageous. Yeah, which makes those sense. are usually those are usually sold out. But like tonight, we've got what I would argue is a good, a, a pretty good Thursday night game: Buffalo versus Miami. The booths are going for five hundred bucks. The pods for two fifty. So and that's so food goes, and beverage minimum, right? Like so, yeah, you, food and beverage minimum. So it's not like you just have to right. pay for the booth. Like no. it comes with food, comes with drinks. Okay. And three dollar buckets a, of uh, I mean, that, a, that one company. There's a tax involved. You got to tip your server, but yes, course. that is the that is the That's cost. Vegas. Not, yeah, of course, not too bad there. Do you, but do you have to be rich like Kelly? Now, there's levels of rich. You could be rich without being as rich as Kelly. You know All right, I mean? fun with numbers wants to know: Will Kelly ever take the Panthers again after that debacle? That was ass. I took the plus four. Everybody said it was sharp. I was like, all right, this is interesting. I mentioned these trends with divisional dogs, either at home or on the road. And I was like, all right, I'm going to blindly bet all four of them. Woof. Well, you know, there's a, there's a possibility. Like, this is why you don't want to overreact too much to one week. Maybe the Saints are going to be really good this season. I don't, I don't know. I don't know yet. May, or maybe, maybe Bryce Young really is like the worst quarterback ever. So I don't want to overreact too much to one game. The sharp guys were definitely on Carolina last week against against New Orleans, and I mean the Panthers were just never even in the game. But I don't think you should write a team off at fun with numbers with a Z. All right. I don't think you should write them off. Gary in UFC 51. Kelly, if your bankroll is two hundred dollars for the NFL, is it better to place ten twenty dollar bets or one two hundred dollar bet? Uh, neither. You should be betting. Two dollar bets. Yeah, Three that's how bets. much. One dollar bet. Bankroll, but it it would also look. It would also depend like how good of the bet you got. Like remember my UConn women's story. Yeah. Like if you had a if you had a bet, maybe a prop that was so fantastic, the value was so good, you should just bet the whole thing on it. That's fair. But you're gonna need a it, in Kelly's economy, Gary. In this economy, thank to Kelly and her her kind. You're going to need more than 200 bucks. I'm sorry. All right. Next Pat Braxton Dart wants to know, do Sharps usually have models similar to Vegas and bet off of that? Or do they usually have some inside scoop and that's what makes them Sharps? There's three different types of bettors. There are the math guys that do have models. They bet off their models. There are the people that use information. And then the majority of people that you see that call themselves Sharps, they're crying about their limits on social media. All they do is they just see somebody else make a bet and they try to copy it Correct. before the bookmaker moves Those are the guys that we yeah. call board cleaners. They Those say, guys, oh, this. They don't, have, they don't have a model. They don't have any information. They just see some smart. They're like cheating off their neighbor and they get mad if the teacher tells them to stop. What so do you think about, what, what about people that are scalping? I mean, I have a couple of guy friends that make yeah, a hundred bucks uh, a day. That's, no, you're so, right. And there, there are people, there are people that are just doing it like honestly, they see that a book wants money on this side, so they, they give them the bet that they probably actually wanted, and then they just take the juice. That takes a big bankroll to do that. That's also a lot of work. That's pretty exhaustive. Hey, and then, I get it, but think about it. If you're If you're consistently making, let's just call it on average throughout a month, you're making an extra three or four grand a month, right? Betting, winning 100, 200 bucks a day. That's a pretty good part-time job. And that would be, in, that would be at no risk. Yeah. And they're... There could be at times some added benefits in terms of maybe you're getting comp points yes. for a free dinner because those those advantage players. I mean, they're looking at every aspect of it like that. They're looking at maybe I can get a free hotel room, maybe I can get a free dinner, etc. The best groups would be both though, Braxton. They would have they probably have math guys modeling for them. They probably have people giving them injury information. Those would be the best groups of all. And they're the ones that really are moving the markets. All right, that's all I got. You got nothing else for me? You're going to you're going to New York this weekend. New Scott York, Park. Ariel Epstein's thirtieth birthday. Just getting what old, John. Birth, what's her actual birthday? That's Saturday. Saturday the fourteenth. Wait, yes. so her she's only one day off of Ellie Bear. Tomorrow's Ellie's birthday. Yes, I donated to Ellie's birthday fund. You should tweet that out uh, yeah. in memory of Coco in Vegas. Uh, because, well, Ellie, yes, never mind. I'll start crying on air, but you get the idea. Happy birthday to Ellie. Mm -hmm. And we're going to save some beagles. 
the little boss lady will be three years old. Oh tomorrow. my gosh. Uh, so, all right, I'll talk to you next week at Fun New York, kid. Go to a baseball game. Go no, make- no, no baseball.